All right. Good morning. My name is Wukama Goldston, and it is a pleasure to be here to teach this class on enjoying your own company. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope you enjoy it. Do you have your mirror with you in the pen and paper? I do. If you don't have a mirror, don't worry yourself. You have to do the exercises without it. So, okay. So I am Rukama Golston, and I do. I own a company called Healing to Win, and I work with communities and individuals and groups. And I'm an intuitive healer. I help people get out of their junk, find the best their, their best selves, and be the best person you can possibly be. And it seems to be such a small group then I'm gonna ask you to tell me who you are in a few seconds, just by name, so that we become more comfortable and more familiar with one another. Hmm. My name is Ginat. So let me unmute everybody, or uh, if I can figure that out. Uh, let's see. If you yes. can unmute yourself. Okay, everybody's unmuted. How are we doing it? Yeah. Just call out. Hi, I'm Clara. I live in a small community outside Jerusalem. Been practicing macrobiotics since 1995 and have known Sheldon and Ginat since 1995, I think. Right. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Sarah right. from Bay Welcome. Thank you. It, it's also, yeah. Hmm? Good. I'm glad. Just jump in. I want to hear the sound of your voice before I get started. <laughs> Leah Hartman, Ramat Beit Shemesh. Thank you. Jerusalem. My name is Luna. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 i am i am i Hi, good morning. Okay. I'm Ellen Rose. I so hold on, Ellen, because I just muted you and I have to figure out. Can you figure out, Ellen, how to unmute yourself? Ellen. Press. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Ellen. Ellen, let me see. Unmute. Okay, Ellen, now try. Ben Shav Mata, New Jerusalem, and that's from uh, there. Uh, I was a student of, of and uh, have remained in touch since then. And I'm enjoying every minute of this forum. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so now let's just take a moment, and I want you to ask yourself, who am I? You introduce yourself by your name, but who are you? Are you your name? So you can just answer that for yourself and your, with your notebook and pen. Who am I? Whatever thoughts come to mind is fine. No pressure. This workshop is to help you connect better with yourself and to embrace yourself. Because you are at this forum, I'm certain that most of everybody who's on this call already understand who they are and know how to embrace themselves. So maybe you're not going to learn anything new today. Maybe you might just learn a little something, but I hope you enjoy the presentation that I've put together for you. And if you don't mind, I want to know how are you awesome? Who are you? And if I'm so awesome, I wish I had a friend like me. Just take your pen and paper out and drive for a few moments. What's so awesome about the person you're looking at in your mirror? 
which we're talking about you in case you forgot. Because you are awesome, just as you are, with all of your stories and all of your journeys, you are awesome. So just for a few moments, sit in your seat and listen to your, yourself. Try not to laugh. I really wanted this to be unmuted, but it's so noisy in the background, we're going to leave ourselves muted. And just for a moment, allow yourself to experience this. I can try again to unmute. And if you... Hold on. Let me just make sure the video is coming in properly. All right. No, leave it muted because there was so much noise in the background and we can't control what's going on in anybody else's house. Okay. So. Uh-oh. My link is not working. Let me pull it up on YouTube, okay? Did I leave you totally? Uh, you just have a blank screen here. Okay, just a moment. And just tell me if you can hear me on the background because I see my link is not coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, that's good. You got a turtle. Great. If I have a turtle, then you're going to hear it. Just imagine yourself sitting in a room and trying your best to control yourself without laughing. Your point is that you don't want to laugh. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Why, for some, that might not have been funny at all. For others, uh oh, hold on. For some, that might not have been funny at all, but for others, it may have been very funny. And the first purpose is to loosen up and allow ourselves to be present. Let me get back on my screen. To be present and ask ourselves, what happened to me when laughter begins? Did I find it funny? Could I see myself? Could I embrace myself? Was I too serious with myself that I did not allow myself to do an exercise that may appear either very stupid or I don't know what it could have appeared for you, but what happened to me and what happened with me after I found myself either laughing or sitting so still that I didn't want to bust a sweat with my laughter. So now that I've laughed, and now that I've maybe found a little humor and loosened up, then let's keep on continue on. I am who I am, not who you think that I am. So the question is, who am I? Truly, sincerely, who am I? Can you answer that question for yourself and with yourself? Or are you still on a journey and I, are you still searching to connect with the person that you see in the mirror? So often we look at ourselves and we look at our issues and we look at what we want to have and who we should be and how we want to discover life. And in reality, you're beautiful just as you are. You're wonderful and you have everything that you need in your present moment to be the most brilliant 
an authentic person that you can possibly be. If you see the screen, then you can feel free to answer these two questions. Oftentimes I've been living for quote unquote them and not really knowing it's me who I want to embrace. What is it about yourself you want to embrace? Is there anyone who truly knows who you are? Go, with, go on with your pen and paper and jot down if there's anyone who knows who you really are. Is there something about yourself you cannot be with that you would love to be with? What is your true authentic inner soul asking you to be? Are you busy living up to others' expectations of who you, of who you should be? Is that putting you under pressure? Am I who I think I am? When I'm most comfortable, when am I most comfortable with me? And when am I uncomfortable with being me? If you don't get to answer all the questions now, don't worry, we only have 40 minutes and we want time for questions and answers. So we'll, leave the, we'll get a slide presentation to you not and you can follow up on it. So don't feel pressured or rushed. This is just a 40 minute taster. If you can see the screen, answer this question for yourself. Is it okay to be me? What would that look like? What would that feel like? What would it feel like if I set my, my world around this one mission, being okay with being me, embracing myself, loving myself, being comfortable in my own spirit, being comfortable when I'm doing something that's not comfortable, being comfortable in every stage of my being, In life, there are things that we absolutely are certain of and that we love about ourselves. In order to truly, truly love and embrace yourself, one of the things that you want to ask yourself, or one of the three, one of the three things that you can ask yourself is what do I love about myself? And to shower yourself with love, unconditional love all the time. So if you want to, then daily you can ask yourself, what three things do I love about myself? And then what three things am I most certain about me? These things are unquestionable. These are the three, three things that are just most certain. But life is so filled with evolving and changing and shifting. Every day that's going to change. And even if I'm most certainly, certainly certain that I don't understand what I'm doing today, that's also a part of the journey. If you don't mind, can you pick your mirror up and just look at yourself in a mirror and see what reflection you get? What are you, catch, what are you catching as you engage and gaze into your own eyes? What is your reflection telling you? If it's telling that you anything other than you are an amazing being, created, formed, and fashioned, to do your part in the world as it is today. What is your part? What is your mission? When you were created, the mold was broken. You were the only person who have your specific handprint and footprint. There's a calling on your life. There's something about you that no one else in the entire universe have. And you, it was put inside of you long before you were created. 
The question is, have you been able to embrace it? Tap into it. Is there any point that you honor yourself fully? Maybe in the shower, maybe in the restroom, maybe while you're preparing dinner, or maybe none of those things speak to you and it's when you go next near the ocean and the water and the energy is flowing through you and you can fully honor yourself in your presence. There's so much honor in knowing why not you. So often we ask the question, why me? When life give us challenges, give us missions that we feel are bigger than life, we ask ourselves, why me? I challenge you to ask yourself, why not me? Pick your, your mirror up and ask, why not me? Could it possibly be somebody else who can do this job better than me? Why not me? Smile at yourself. Give yourself a moment to be in love with you. Why not me? There's a deeper and inner knowing that in my reflection, there's a presence that I have yet to tap into. What is it about you that you still don't know? Are you curious? Are you, living, live, are you allowing curiosity to unfold itself daily? You can't know yourself fully because every day you're evolving and you're a new person. Even though my habits are the same, I feel the exact same, every day you're a different being. Do you allow yourself to be present in this differentness, in this newness? Is there room for newness? So no matter what you are telling yourself, remember this. I don't know if you're familiar with this video. And if it don't click in, I'm not going to go to it this time. It's called Stop It. It's just called Stop It. Any issue that you have, just stop it. And it's very funny. And it goes into just explaining why you should stop it. Someone goes, she goes, her name is Shoshana. She goes to therapy and the therapist ask her what's her problem. And everything that she says, she says, stop it. And every time she says, well, I thought we were going to deal with it. Stop it. We don't deal with it. Stop yourself whenever you go on a train wreck of negativity about who you are and what you're doing. When judgment, when criticism, when guilt, when it come in, be gentle with yourself and know that no matter where you are, you're doing your best. Reflect on your inner beauty. Give yourself permission to be present. And give yourself permission to quiet the voices to tell you, why not me? Because usually when we're in judgment or criticizing, we're disconnected from ourselves. And we're not allowing ourselves to be present to see what gift is behind whatever the issue is. Who do I perceive myself to be? As I look at my life, every stage and every age brought different gifts and challenges. I want to ask you, have you changed? Have you changed a zillion times? Are you the same person that your mother birthed? Are you different? Did you have challenges? Did you stretch? Did you grow? Three steps for learning and embracing yourself. So step one is, as soon as you open your eyes in the morning, and I'm not sure about you, but I say more day I need as soon as I open my eyes. But right after I do my more day I need prayer, I'm, I'm tapping straight into gratitude. And that gratitude allow me to call my name and say, I love you and thank you. This is three steps that you can use for yourself. You can use it when you wake up in the morning because it says in the scriptures that I would do, I would, I would worship when I rise in midday and in the evening. So step one is when you rise in the morning, call your name, hear the reflection, the sound, 
hear it bounce off your tongue as you say whatever your name is. Hold your mirror up now. Look in your mirror, call your name since it's 10 in the morning or 10 to 20, 20 or 30 and say, thank you. I love you. Thank you, Ukama. I love you. Step two is whenever you go to the restroom, because no matter how busy we are in life, no matter how filled our plate is, we take those restroom breaks. Your body demands for you to do that. And when you go to the restroom, begin to put in your midday or at any time, just put in habit while you're washing your hands and you're going twinkle, twinkle, little star to make sure you're washing them long enough. I want you to start adding in your day. Call your name and say, I love you and thank you. And when you do that, if there's a mirror in your, re in your restroom, look into your eyes and say, I love you and thank you. Be sure to call your name. Oftentimes, we're so busy and preoccupied with taking care of everybody else, we're running from ourselves. So this exercise, this three-step will bring you closer to connecting with you. And what better time than when I go use the restroom? That's my own private time. And before, before you close your eyes at night, after you say your Shema Yisrael, then feel free to call your name and say, I love you and thank you. And this three-step exercise would allow you to embrace yourself and become closer to you. My life would be perfect if only I could be, allow myself to be perfectly imperfect. If I could love myself as much as my body loves me, and I can, as much as my thought, and also love myself as much as my thoughts visit me. If I can be accepting and understanding and compassionate to myself as much as the sun is consistently shining, every morning the sun shines. Every day, whatever state your body is in, it continues to work for you and through you. Could you love yourself that much? We have 60 to 80,000 um, thoughts a day. Most of those thoughts are negative. Can you love yourself that many times a day? Can you embrace yourself and accept yourself? I wonder if you ever thought about it. What if you were actually wrong about everything you thought about or perceived about yourself? What would that mean about you? What if you woke up tomorrow or you woke up this afternoon after taking a nap and you realized I was wrong about everything I thought? Would that shake you? What would that do to you? If you, give yourself to be, if you give yourself permission to be different, then you leave room for growth. Every day we change, we transform, and we become different than who we knew ourselves to be. Give yourself permission to experience yourself through the eyes of compassion. Long before you were forming fashion, the creator knitted you and formed you and placed you in your mother's womb. He knew you. He understood you. He knew what you would become. He knew what he could offer you. I mean, what you would offer the world because he placed it inside of you before you were even born. And knowing that, what will you give back to him? What's, your, what's going to be your gift to him in this life process? It's already written. So we use the scripture, Psalms 139, 13 and 16. And if life get heavy and you feel burdened and you just can't get it right and you just can't snap into embracing yourself and loving yourself and finding the best in life, just give yourself, put your hands together, clap your hands together and nine times say thank you. There's a sequence in nine. Thank you, 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 thank you. Why do we do it nine times? We do it nine times because there's a sweet sequence in nine. Nine is an indestructible number, which means you cannot destroy yourself if you use the number nine. Any pattern you want to give yourself, if you do it nine times, it's indestructible. No one can destruct that nine, that um, thank you after you do it nine times. They're meridians. 
Chinese meridians in your hands and in your feet. When you clap your hands, you tap into them. You change the energy. Your energy shift. Something as simple as clapping your hands nine times. You can do it at any time. Another exercise that's remarkable is hand to heart. Just place your hand to your heart and remember that somebody is allowing your heart to be. Somebody is breathing through your body. So whatever the circumstances are that are possible to pull you away from yourself, I want you to tap back in and embrace yourself because no one has the right, no situation, no time, no limitation can ever take you away from you. You're your greatest gift. The creator created you to be here, to give the world something. What are you giving? Remember to clap. Remember, I love you, call your name, and thank you. And remember that you are awesome, just as you are. I've made up my mind, and so it is. It's perfectly okay to honor, love, and embrace me. I am worth it. Paradise is yours. You get to choose it. And that's the end of the presentation. And I want to know if anybody have any questions since we have 10 minutes left. So if you have a question and you raise your hand or you want to share whatever come to your mind, it's your moment. Well, I have a question. Yes. Um, the audi your audience, is it basically for people who really have a low opinion of themselves? Because no. I don't feel that I need to sort of walk around all day saying how wonderful I am to make my day. And I feel that if I don't say that the whole time, I'm okay. Do you know what I mean? I don't f sometimes say, you know, we're put in certain challenges, for example, where we feel bad about ourselves because somebody else made us feel bad, you know. Um, and then I could see that that kind of thing would work, you know, because they sort of, um, un you know, say somebody's very mean to you or something like that, or you've, or you've got a really, or say you've had a really bad experience, then I think, that, that kind of thing would be very helpful. But basically, just going through my day, I don't feel that I need to keep saying, I'm lovely, I'm wonderful, you're worth it, you were created. Do you know what I mean? I think. So, so let me ask you a question. Yes. What does the critic in your mind say to you when you have those challenges? Because there's a critic that lives inside of us yeah. that always shows up. We can't run from it. I, my, my presentations are for all of humans. It doesn't matter what state you're in, how spiritual you are, spiritual you are how, life, how much you've gained in life and how wonderful you feel about yourself. Every point in life, because we're having a human experience, the critic inside of us still shows up. And you don't have to do it every day or in every second, but you have the tools net around you if you should need them. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe this exercise isn't for you because you are already there, but it's just a tool set that you can use in case you ever need it. Right. I think that um, basically, you know, I generally, my mind somehow goes into a good place on the whole. You know, if I get up in the morning, I'm basically in a good place unless, of course, something happens where somebody intentionally puts me in a bad place. And that's no when I think your exercise is very good because if somebody has put you in a bad place, then, then if you can find that um, chamber in your brain to say, you know what, I'm okay. Um, and, and I'm maybe, you know, not going to let somebody put you in that place, then, then that would be helpful. But I think basically, I mean, what about the people, there are people who are like, say, obnoxious or something, and they automatically think they're really wonderful. They're probably the ones who like to put other people down. 
but um, I think they do it all the time, maybe even a bit too much. But it's not for real. It's not really embracing themselves. If, if you feel that someone else can come into your space and make you feel any way, then I just want you to do the class exercise because no one come into our space and make us feel any way. When they, when they meet us, we, they're meeting and connecting the mirror that's inside of us. So if someone right. make you feel any kind of way, just quietly clap your hands and just do the nine exercise. And if it's not for you, that's just as wonderful. And, and usually, I'm not talking about um, connecting and embracing yourself in a shallow, egotistical way. I'm talking about a pure connection with you and not going around all day. Oh, I'm amazing. I'm awesome. That's not the point of the um, exercise. Right. I definitely see, you know what? The thing is that say you are in that situation where suddenly some out of the blue, probably, or not out of the blue, somebody makes you feel bad, then I guess you just have to, um, to remember to do that exercise, you know, and maybe, you know, when we're put under pressure, for example, I think there's something in the brain that cuts off and we kind of go into survival mode. Um, I, um, and that's why maybe we forget to do that at these important times when we should do that. Thank you. Did Thank anybody you. else want to or ask a question? Me? Hello? Can you hear Hello. me? Yes, first, ma'am. First of all, thank you. Greetings from London. I'd like to ask, this has been very nice, and I'd like to ask, where does the fact that nine is an unbreakable number come from? I've never come across this before. <laughs> it's in spiritual work. Oh. All, of my, all of my spiritual teachers um, use it. If you look it up, if you do nine times anything, it's unbreakable. So if you do nine times three, it's, all, it's, all, it's always going to end up being nine. And so it just keep repeating itself. I see. Okay, very fascinating. This is not spiritual work. Thank you. Is there somewhere this information that has been on the screen can be printed off from to refer back to? I'm going to, I'm going to give the um, presentation to Hinat so that you can use it. Okay. That'd be great. I'll send it out. If, yes. uh, do I have your email address? Yes, you do. Or if, no, I, yours, I know I do. Oh. Everybody else listening? Yeah, sorry, everyone else listening, if you would want to send me maybe in a private chat your email address and then I could send the, the information out to you. Thank you very much. Will do. Rukama? Yes, ma'am. Hi. How else might a person use this concept of nine in transforming something negative to something positive or transforming in general? You can snap your fingers nine times. You can turn around in a circle nine times. But clapping work really, really well because it connects with the meridian, the Chinese meridians in your hands, which is an energy force that transform. But you can use nine however you choose to use it. If you want to say modani nine times, I don't know. It's just a cycle that if you put it in nine times, it continues to repeat itself and it break habits. It's like when they tell you if you do something for 21 days, then have a habit can be broken, then you can take sequence of nine. So are you saying that, let's say a person is, I don't know, blocked financially, right? Right. So then saying the, the sentence, money flows to me easily, money flows to me easily, nine times, maybe clapping your hands, that actually would change something internally in the person. And then it would, and then you, they would see it reflected back in their life. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You can, whatever it is that you, that help you reach whatever your blockage is, then you use it for it. So if it's financial blo blockage, you have to use, you can use it for it. The thing is, is that it has to resonate and fill in with you. See, thank you is simple. You can say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't have to believe nothing and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it goes within and it penetrates inside of you. So if you're telling yourself something and your, your internal dialogue is, that's a lie, that's not true, then you're in conflict. So you want to clean up that conflict area first. OK. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, I have a question. Yes. Um, who are the people that you work with most in your professional life? I, I'm sure you help a lot of people, but who are those that, that turn to you most? That's an interesting question because all walks of life can turn to me. Mm -hmm. Wealthy people come to me. People who don't have any money turn to me. People who have um, mental issues turn to me. And people who just wives going through life or people who are husbands and floating through their daily living mm -hmm. turn to me. So I don't have a set person that can come to me. My ideal person, my Rukama's ideal person, is the person who's been to many, many hands and they didn't, they were not successful with their progress. That's the ones I enjoy working with because mm -hmm. you, they're the ones with the most doubts, the most fears, and the most who believe that this is not going to work. And everything that I do in my practice is very, very simple work. And I take you back to kindergarten. Hmm. Thank you. And thank you for your presentation. It's really inspiring and meaningful. Thank you. I agree. Anybody else? Where are you based? I'm actually from Demona, Israel. Oh, okay. And I'm, I'm at this moment, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Atlanta. So the beautiful thing is, is that one of the things I pride myself on is say yes. Say yes if I can do it. So I got a message that said, this form is going on and you should sign up to be a teacher. And I said yes. How wonderful. I had no clue who would be my audience and what it would be that I was joining. But I knew that the spirit or the creator guided me to create this course, especially for this group. I had a whole nother topic. I put it in. It's a class already ready. And the, the system bounced it out. So I want to thank you all. <laughs> I don't know, you know, why I was supposed to do it. And you not try to change the time because I woke up at two in the morning to be present for 10 o'clock. But I did not care. I said yes, and I'm going to stand to it. And I hope that somebody got a little something from this. We certainly did. I did. Uh, One, two, three. Thank you. 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 Remember that if it make you smile and it make you happy, then your energy is shifting. If you do, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 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 nine times and you don't get a shift, then do another cycle and do another cycle and listen to yourself. You know what works best for you. You know when that critic is in your mind and it's talking and it's telling you things about yourself or someone did something to me or it's them. When you're saying it's them, nine times out of 10, it's inside of you because we can either be the victim or the victor. And at any point that someone come into my space and cause me to do or feel any kind of way, I have to check in with me. They're just a mirror. No matter how, how complicated it is, it's just a reflection showing you what you need to clean up inside of yourself. That was Thank an amazing sentence. That was an amazing sentence because what I wanted to say is, I, you know, I, I came on and there was the laughing uh, issue and I'm a very, very happy-go-lucky laughing person, but I just could not bring myself to laugh. I just, I was not there. And I believe it's something chemical, you know, I just could not, but I was listening and I know all about the nine number and, um, and everything. And just this last clapping, this last time clapping brought a smile to my face. So I challenge you to actually go back and look at a couple of laughing videos and ask yourself the simple question, 
why can't I laugh? What's so tight about life that when I hear the sound of someone else laughing or the sound of a baby laughing or seeing a baby giggle, it doesn't stir up something inside of me to laugh. Yeah, now, I normally always laugh nine times out of 10. I'm a very, la but there are some times where you just can't get yourself to it. But next time I feel like that, or when I feel like that, now, I, I will do that. I promise, I will, I promise it to myself. Give yourself permission because sometimes we're so tight with ourselves that we actually put ourselves in a small box. The exercise that I do with people is thank you, first of all, for being honest and authentic with yourself and sharing with us that you didn't laugh. Sometimes people don't want to laugh because they're on the screen with other people. Sometimes, oh, am I supposed to laugh? That's supposed to be funny. Mm. And a lot of chatter goes on in the mind. I don't want to laugh right now. It's 10 in the morning. What am I sitting here? hacking and about. Why wouldn't you laugh? Laughter brings so much. So thank you. That was very important because when we do prep, when I do presentations, I also want to hear the feedback. That's not what the norm is doing. Everybody's feedback is important because that's your connection with yourself. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Could I ask you, as I missed the first 10 minutes, unfortunately, um, 